What up, peeps? Tony Baker here, back with another movie review. This time I'm reviewing One Night in Miami. It's uh, Regina King's feature film directorial debut. Now, Regina King is um, a critical darling on the acting front. She's been acting since she was literally a little kid. And her resume is diverse, and she has great performances all throughout that thing. Consistently a dope performer, from Jerry Maguire to, to uh, Poetic Justice. The first time I remember seeing her was like in 227, the TV show from the 80s. And then, you know, she stood out in Boys in the Hood and then Poetic Justice. And then, you know, she kept getting these quality roles. Jerry Maguire, she stood out as Cuba Gooden Jr.'s wife and like, you know, and then her resume grew. And then recently she won an Oscar for Bill Street Can Talk. And, uh, you know, she was outstanding in the HBO series, The Watchmen. Uh, time and time again, Regina King has delivered on the acting front. And she's diverse. She's done voiceover for The Boondock. She played both the brothers in The Boondock. So it's like, man, what can she do? And she can direct, apparently. She's already been directing uh, for series like Shameless and like, uh, LA's finest, like on the TV and streaming platform. So now she's tackling feature film. And her first one out the gate, One Night in Miami, it's about based on true events, but I'm not sure how true everything is within it. But it's based on a night in Miami between friends. And these friends happen to be Muhammad Ali, Jim Brown, Malcolm X, and Sam Cooke. It's about a night they get together in Miami after Muhammad Ali, who was Cassius Clay at this time, defeats Sonny Liston. And so they hang out, and it's about what they talk about within that hangout. You know, I don't want to get too much away in the review part, but you know, we're going to stack the performances up with actors that have played these iconic figures before. Like, was, was he better than Will Smith and Ali? Was he better than Denzel as Malcolm X? Uh, let me tell you this, they did a good job. Like those other, those prior performances, they melt away. Like when you watch this film, uh, Eli Gorey plays Muhammad Ali. This is my intro to this actor. And I feel like he nailed the role uh, down to the accent. You, I really felt like this is Muhammad Ali. My bad, Cassius Clay at the time of this. Kingsley ben Amir plays Malcolm X. And my intro to him was actually in the film King Arthur. I think that was the name of it, King Arthur. It was the Guy Ritchie King Arthur with uh, Charlie Hunman in the role of Arthur. He was in that film and I remembered him from that. Does a great job as Malcolm X. Uh, Aldous Hodge, who, you know, is straight out of Compton. He's uh, in the city on the hill. He plays Jim Brown, nailed it. And also Leslie Odom Jr. is tackling Sam Cooke. He's a singer, actor, and he does a great job. The cast is just perfect. You can tell this is from a play. So they had the locations pretty central. Like it's not a lot of, you know, we're over here now, we're over here. They are sprinkled in and like in the front and the end of the movie, they're in various places, but like the meat of it is pretty much hotel room right outside the hotel. And all the action is in the dialogue and the conversations between these great men. And you know, a lot of the conversations are relevant today. They hit a nerve today and the emotional punch attached to every interaction is dope because we know about them in real life. So it's a little bit of heartbreak there, a little bit of sadness underneath, but the great conversations that they had. And it really felt like they were friends and that they cared about each other. So I was like, man, I'm feeling every piece of this. And Regina King did a great job in her directorial debut. Like, man, I want in on a future Regina King project. I'm like, yo, she did great. Uh, the critics love it. I loved it. I was clowning it before the movie watch party. I was like, <laughs> I saw one of the reviews and they were like, it's the best film of the year. I'm like, relax, it's January 15th. I mean, it's not, <laughs> it's not hard to be the best film of the year in the middle of January, you know what I'm saying? But it's the best film of the year. You know what I mean? I really enjoyed this film. The conversations, the chemistry, the performances, the subtlety of it. It was great. I, I really have nothing bad to say. I wish it was a little bit longer. I, I would have liked to see more conversations between them. But uh, yeah, it was excellent. But forget all that. Y'all want to know the smooth jazz review of One Night in Miami. Well, here it is. Oh, yeah. I'm giving One Night in Miami five saxophones out of five. 
I got nothing bad to say. It was relevant. It hit, it hit tones. It hit nerves. I loved every piece of it, man. I was emotional the whole time. There's the five. Y'all been wanting the five. There's a five for your ass. All right? Now I'm going to do the recap of the whole thing to let y'all know what's really going on. All right, here's the recap of One Night in Miami. The movie opens up. Ali's having a fight over in England. He's actually killing it at first, and then he's struggling in the fight. Cut to uh, Sam Cooke. He has a particular show that he's performing at, and, you know, he bombed. He pretty much bombed at this show. Like, it was for a white audience, and he was trying to, you could tell he was trying to cater to the white crowd, and they were just like, eh, you know, they were giving them nothing. They were checking their watch, they were talking. I was like, wow, the disrespect. So he starts off there, and then we they show Jim Brown show up to a, a nice place in Georgia, and the guy he's talking to is played by Bo Bridges, who's Jeff Bridges' uh, brother. I was like, oh, Bo Bridges is back. And he's this guy, he was showering Jim Brown with praise and like, oh, all the yards you got, you man, you are just killing it. You are a credit to the state of Georgia. This, that, and the third, flooding them with all types of accolades and love. And they're on the porch. And you know, we were marveling at the porch. You're like, man, ain't nothing like a good porch, a good southern porch. But a southern porch has a lot of history on that porch. So it was like, hmm. So it's funny, he was showering all this love, and then Jim Brown was about to walk into the place. And he was like, no, I don't, I don't allow niggas in my place. And I was like, whoa! Oh, whoa, 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 didn't see that coming. Uh, wow. And then Malcolm X was giving a speech, and this is around the time that Malcolm was starting to fray from the Nation of Islam and Elijah Muhammad, so it was just like, you know, he was having a conversation with his wife and just like, you know. So it was pretty much, all these great men were kind of taking an L in the beginning. Like they were taking some kind of, it was like a struggle for them, a conflict. Like, you think of these great men and all the things that they achieved, but within that, you had moments of, like, uncertainty, um, doubt, you know, taking L's, you know, a bad show. To some people, when you perform, you're only as funky as your last show. So, you know, they were dealing with all these things. Cut to Miami, huge fight for uh, Cassius Clay, who's Cassius Clay at this time. Malcolm wanted them to get together after the fight and celebrate. And uh, so they all agreed, they were all friends. Jim Brown was ringside. Malcolm X was in the crowd taking pictures. Sam Cooke was there with his wife. And he wins the fight, becomes the champion that night. So they get together. And you know, Sam Cooke is super successful at this time. He had a lavish hotel across town in Miami. But Malcolm is keeping it subtle, nice little subtle hotel. Because this is Malcolm X. He's not balling like that. You know what I mean? He's a, he's a civil rights leader. You know what I mean? So it's not like, even if he wanted to ball out like that, you, you're not, you not going to ball out like that. People be like, oh, you lavish over here, Malcolm X? And they had the, you know, the, the Muslim cats safeguarding them. Basic low rent motel they all get together they're in there and jim brown's like where the women at tonight they're like you know malcolm's like you know i thought we just kick it you know as friends i got some ice cream in the refrigerator it was cute man he pulled out the little ice cream and these are grown men cassius clay is now the world champion it's just like we're not partying we doing this i just want to talk to y'all keep it simple i was like this is adorable that was an adorable thing to see from malcolm when everybody else wanted to party, as men, as famous men, they was just like, where the party at? Party's right here, we are gonna talk this out. And they were just having great conversations about where they were in life as men, and then the conflicts that they would have within the conversation, like Malcolm felt that, you know, Sam Cooke wasn't really using his, his platform, right, to really speak to the struggle and what was going on and, and be a true weapon. And like, you know, Sam Cooke is like, you can't really say that, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I'm doing this, you know, I'm 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 writing records, I'm behind the scenes, I'm giving other black artists, you know, a chance to perform on my platform. <laughs> my platform, that's the term we use now. But I'm putting money in their pockets. Like, for example, like, you know, the Womax. You know, they had an R&B hit that only went to 93 on the chart, cut to the Rolling Stones wanting to cover that same song. And you know, at first I was like, nah, but then I was like, all right, I'll, I'll let you guys get the rights to this song and redo it. And so, you know, Sam Cooke and the, and the Womacks got a piece of that, and that song went to number one on the charts. So now, you know, they're eating behind the scenes, even though the, the song stalled out 
at you know 93 on the R&B charts, and that was the dilemma. It was like, okay, so black music can get redone by white artists, but now it's thriving as before it just stalled out here. That's what I'm talking about. You you're not. And Malcolm was frustrated with that, and Sam Cooke was was handling business in his own way because he was a businessman as well as a music artist. The stuff that Sam Cooke was doing at that time was revolutionary. So they were having that whole conflict there. Cassius Clay was slowly coming over to the Nation of Islam. Jim Brown was, you know, at this time, he was the rushing leader in the NFL, killing it. And then he wanted to transition into movies. He was like, yo, you doing movies now? He's like, yeah, don't tell nobody, but you know, I'm doing like this little Western, you know, I die in the middle of it, but you know. <laughs> oh, you get killed in the middle? Well, yeah, you know. But they paid me $37,000. Now, mind you, this is 1963, $37,000. I Googled it. I was like, how much is that now? It's like $300,000 just for a movie role. I was like, come on, man. Who's passing that up? So you got this whole dilemma. And, you know, within that, they respected each other as, as in different places in their life. You know, Malcolm X was a devout Muslim. Cassius Clay is coming over, but he, he didn't come out to the world that he was converting to Islam and then changing his name yet. And there was a moment where, you know, Muhammad Ali felt like Malcolm X was kind of like using him as a, as, a, as a face of the movement, as a face of the Nation of Islam. as like, you know, rather than being a true friend, you're just using me to give credibility to this organization or like awareness or whatever as a recruiting tool. So you had that whole, you know, conflict there and like, they were just at odds like that. But it, within that, it was still all love between these men and it was just dope to see those conversations being had at that time. That's stuff we still deal with today. Like, you know, when do you stay silent or when do you, you know, speak on certain things that's going on in the world today? Are you just gonna be an artist and not say anything? Or are you just gonna fully ride out and then lose, lose fans? You know, all of these dynamics played a role then and you could feel it. But man, the, the main thing was just the brotherhood, man. I was just like, yo, this is really, really good. And then it makes you dig back into you know, how they really lived their lives. It was sad that, you know, Malcolm and Sam Cooke died shortly thereafter within the events of the film. You know, Muhammad Ali went on to live a much longer life, but he had to battle with Parkinson's. And Jim Brown is still out here today. So uh, that's pretty much the recap. It's not really a lot to recap because the action of the piece is really just dialogue and, and you know, conversations. So it's not a lot to, you know, recap it up like that but it's a really great film i recommend it to everybody everybody should check it out the conversations that they have are really great and uh timely and relevant even now so uh check that out that's my recap the actors did a phenomenal job i will say this i loved how the conversations between malcolm and sam cook brought up real conversations about the music Bob Dylan was writing that was, you know, it was more than just a, you know, a poppy love song. He was talking about, you know, real stuff that black people could relate to, even though it's coming from Bob Dylan. It was like, why can't you write a record like this, Sam, as opposed to, and then shortly thereafter, it was something Sam was already toying with, A Change Gonna Come comes out of this, which is one of the, you know, greatest songs of all time. So it was just, it was good to see that transition too. Dope movie, man. Dope movie. Uh, check it out. So Amazon Prime, please pull up, post about it, spread the word. It's the best film of the year. Anyway, man, appreciate y'all for tuning in. Uh, let me know what you thought of the film in the comments section below. Uh, let me know what you thought about Regina King's directorial debut and about the performances in this joint. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as usual, we out here.